What's up, Snake fans? Muscle Serpents University here on a very, very late Tuesday night. I think I told you guys yesterday, this is the week of the uh, Mr. Olympia competition. I won't be going to Las Vegas this week because I have a newborn baby, but I've been doing a lot of coverage. I probably filmed about 20 videos in the last seven days for the RX Muscle YouTube channel. So this snake video stuff has been getting uh, the, the shaft, so to speak. I think I produced a really good one yesterday because I got bit in the face. And that wasn't planned, of course. Uh, I don't think anyone wants to get bit in the face, but it I thought it turned out to be a pretty funny video. And it basically shows you when you're in a rush and you do reckless things, how stupid uh, the outcome could be. So hopefully you guys enjoyed my, my follies that happened there. But, you know, I showed off a bunch of bows I know you guys really like. Today we're going to talk about the pinstripe gene because a lot of people think it's a throwaway ball python gene. It's like not worth anything anymore. And you know what the truth is? I, I was one of those people. I thought, ah, you know, what do I want to do with a pinstripe? But man, I'll tell you something. I bought a pinstripe Ultramel from Vin Russo in 2014 just because I liked the way it looked. And I grew it up slowly. It wasn't a great eater at first. And it bred for me last year. And I produced an Orange Dream albino. And I'll tell you something. Man, that project has turned into something great because uh, this year I hit on that albino lesser Orange Dream albino. And oof, I'm going to show you that one again. I'm going to show you how it's been growing up and, and what the potential is with that project. And I want to basically show you also what the potential of the pinstripe gene is. Because a lot of people don't realize pinstripe has a lot of orange in it. You know, and if you put Orange Dream, you put Ultramel into pinstripe, you bring out those oranges. And it really is a very big pattern reducer. You know, we think of pinstripe as just looking like pinstripes, but really what it's, it, what it is, it's a pattern reducer. So it almost makes a solid snake with just lines on it, a little short, you know, little dashes all over. And if you could get that color to be enhanced with Orange Dream and stuff like, uh, you know, even Fire or Enchi, that I think that, that that snake could be a super crazy looking snake. And that's been the goal over the last couple of years. And I think I really hit some good stuff this year. And I have, I'm going to have some of it for sale and some of it not. But uh, let's take a look and see what that pinstripe potential actually is. Come on into the snake room. Let's get right to the point. Let's get right to what I think is a normal pinstripe. It's probably possible head pied. Um, this is pretty much standard color. It's kind of a brownish with, you know, you get a little bit of the highlights on top that have a little bit of orange in them. But pretty much that's your standard pinstripe. You know, nothing special. I think a lot of people kind of consider them really not very valuable. Although when they first hit the market, they were probably worth about 25 grand a piece because they were something so different that no one had seen in ball python breeding. Now I want to show you a scaleless head. Pinstripe. We can get him to relax a little bit here. And the scaleless heads are not just scaleless, you know, heads with one copy that, you know, when you get two copies, you get a scaleless animal. They definitely lighten up the animals a little bit. They, they definitely brighten them up. If I, we can get them to relax a little bit here, I can show you. Let's see the difference here. These two, and you can see the reduced pattern here and the that really golden vibrance. Completely different from this one to this one. Once again, this is the scaleless head. This is your regular pinstripe. So you have a reduction in pattern here and a little bit more gold. Even though this one looks a little lighter, you got these, these goldish highlights here. And once again, one, either one of these could be head pied, um, so that could be also changing things up a little bit. But this scaleless head, if we can see the scaleless head, you can see this missing scaleless head, definitely brightens up and creates a vibrance to this pinstripe. All right, so there's your regular pinstripe. Now what we do is we put Orange Dream in there, and look at that. Look at what that orange dream does to the pinstripe. Now, all of a sudden, we see that the normal oranges that are in here that are kind of hidden by a little bit of too much melanin. And now we're starting to see, look at that orange, really starting to bring out more of these oranges here. So that's orange dream. 
pinstripe. And you can see what's going on here. I mean, that's just, the oranges are really, really, really enhancing the pin, or I should say the pinstripe, I think are really enhancing the orange. And they, you can go either way with that. They're both enhancing each other. Now, if we go one step further with this, there's Orange Dream Pinstripe Ultramel. So you throw Ultramel in there, which is an albino T positive. T positive it means tyrosinase positive. That means that the tyrosinase enzyme, that's the enzyme that creates melanin, is there, but it's there in reduced amounts. So we're losing melanin, but we're not losing at all. In a tyrosinase negative animal, we lose it all. That's a, that's your typical albino. That would be your white and you know yellow snake. This snake is uh, not a T minus albino. It's a T positive albino with the orange dream in there. And look at that. Look at what that brings out. That's just exquisite. There's a lot of like orange coloration in there. And you can just see the potential there. So this pinstripe animal that doesn't really look like very much of anything, you add orange dream to it, and all of a sudden you start seeing some highlights. Now you got Ultramel, orange dream, and pinstripe. And the next step would be to put super orange dream in there, and maybe some entry too, but super orange dream, maybe even some fire in there. And you can see that the pinstripe that looks like nothing now becomes something really cool. Now I wanted to show you the mama of, of this clutch. This is an Ultramel pinstripe. Look at this. These snakes get better as they get older, which is crazy. Look at the head. Look how light this snake is. And I don't even know if the camera's picking it up as well. I'm going to come back a little bit here. This is just Ultramel pinstripe. I got this original girl from Vin Russo in 2014. Okay. And... She's gorgeous. Now this snake is that snake with orange dream in it. So when this snake gets a little older, you're gonna see stuff that's not in here. So imagine how much better this is gonna get. Because orange dream, as we know, gets better as you get older. So here's something that probably a lot of people just dismiss. I did when I first got into the ball pipe. I said, you know, that pinstripe, ah, it's just kind of a throwaway, right? It's nothing special. Look at the difference. Orange Dream, Orange Dream Pinstripe Ultramel, and there's the grown-up Pinstripe Ultramel. Just what an amazing bunch of animals, and I think I'm only just getting started with this. I can't wait to get Super Orange Dream into this. And once again, maybe some fire and some Enchi. There's just a lot of potential in this project here. And since we're talking about Orange Dream, I want to show you another clutch that I produced this is my Orange Dream Lesser Head Albino, bred to an albino. Look at this really, really nice looking boy here. He's Orange Dream Lesser, 100% Head Albino. Look at that coloring. He, like, he wants to really take a bite out of me. I just love Orange Dream and Lesser together. Even if it wasn't head albino, it, it's pretty, pretty cool. This was the dad, pretty much. Same genes. And last year I tried to hit that albino. I produced an orange dream albino. I've shown you that before. But what I really was looking to hit on, and I'm gonna pull her out, is this girl here. Oh, this boy, I should say, which is even better. This is an orange dream lesser Ooh, this guy doesn't like me touching his little girlfriend or sister there. <laughs> this is, I've been getting bit a lot these last couple days. I don't know what it is. All right, so this is Orange Dream Lesser Albino. Look at the orange in here. Look at that striping from the lesser. Look at this, like, these, like, really, like, almost, like, metallic flecking on the bottom. And, of course, the, you just see this Orange Dream influence all through here. That's not orange dream, that's my blood, <laughs> I think. And uh, that's what we wanted to hit. So now I got a male, and not this year obviously, but next year he'll be breeding. And that's gonna enable us to take this project one step up, because then we wanna go to the super 
orange dream lesser albino that would be super cool and put this guy into maybe some other albino projects since he is a visual albino he's got that lesser and the albino gene in it i think there's a lot of potential here this is what i tried to hit last year i actually produced the like i told you a female orange dream albino so possibly breeding this guy to that female to produce that super orange dream uh, albino and the super orange dream lesser albino might be the way to go uh, i'm really kind of digging this definitely a hold back here this one will be for sale however so if you guys are looking for a lesser orange dream male head albino this would definitely help you uh move your project forward especially if they have a a female albino that you want to breed or two, or even an orange dream albino, God forbid, that would be great. This guy within one year will be producing pretty much the same stuff I'm producing. So once again, look how clean that is. That orange dream lesser really is a clean looking snake and really cool looking patterning and everything like that. And there's your albino form. All right, guys, 12 midnight, just made it right under the wire here on Tuesday evening so that I can get this daily vlog. I've now got to go back and edit it. So, you know, that's, that's, that's another whole thing I got to deal with, but that's okay. Nothing wrong with that. I did some feeding here today too of my frozen thawed. Usually on Tuesdays, I do frozen thawed. Wednesdays gets live. Obviously the ball pythons and babies get live just because it's easier. And the, uh, the big boas and the carpet pythons and my berms will get frozen thawed because, uh, you know, it's just easier to be honest with you. And, and they, they're, they're very, they're not that picky what they like to eat. I have maybe one or two boas that are picky and they're babies, but once they start eating, man, they're bulletproof. They'll eat anything pretty much you throw in front of them. Matter of fact, you have to sometimes temper how much you feed them. But I hope you guys are having a really good Tuesday. Of course, we'll be back tomorrow and I should have some more time and hopefully I'll be able to do something a little bit more creative. But for now, I'll wait for that subscribe button. Like this video, turn on your notifications. We'll be back tomorrow.